have a friend. This is the first friend I've made on the island. So this is a solo trip. I'm here by myself and I was very nervous when I landed in Puerto Rico on Tuesday. I had like a oh shit moment. Like why are you here alone? Like why did you think you'd do this alone? You should have come with a friend. Like why'd you come at all? And I was a little nervous. I did do some solo traveling last summer in Australia, but I was coming off of like a study abroad program. So I guess I didn't like embark on it alone. But this trip, like, I flew alone, like, no one met me at the airport, obviously, and I've navigated it all on my own. I want to run you through everything, like, how I'm budgeting, how I'm, like, where I'm staying as a solo female traveler, like, the things I'm doing. I, like, am excited to solo travel. It's something I want to get more into, but it's a little daunting at first, of course. So I would recommend just biting the bullet and staying in a hostel, like, booking tours with people and, like, everybody's really social. Like, everybody's on vacation, they're really happy, and they just want to talk to people as well. This is the hostel room. Right now it's just me and this one other girl and we've actually like became really good friends. So she's in this bunk and I'm in this bunk. It's kind of nice, it's just the two of us. There is like a mirror here. Very nice. And down the hall is the bathrooms. So just, just the room that we're in. Okay, so I'm in Puerto Rico for five full days. Well, I, I landed on Tuesday and I'm in like the afternoon at 3 p.m. Then I fly out 7 p.m. on Saturday. So it's like four and a half, almost five full days. Let's go through the things that I've planned slash already done. So day one I landed at like 3.30 at the airport. By the time I got to my hostel, it was like 4.30. I'm staying at Fortel Hostel, which is $30 a night, and it's literally in the heart of Old San Juan. Super walkable area, lots of bars, restaurants. Um, it's a little further than from beaches, but still it's a short like five minute drive or you could walk 30 minutes. Um, so my plan, or what I did that day, was I just explored Old San Juan. I walked around Fortales Street, which is the street my, Airbnb, my hostel's actually on. And then I walked along the Paseo de la Princesa, and that goes around all of Old San Juan. So you get to see all the old um, walls, which is really pretty. There's lots of fountains, and there's lots of street vendors that are sh selling like shaved ice, cold drinks, beer, stuff like that. Um, and then for dinner, I went to the birthplace of the Pina Colada. It was really delicious, um, the Pina Colada. Uh, it had a lot of rum in it. I was kind of shocked. Um, I read Google reviews. The food is like kind of mid, but go for the pina colada because they're amazing. So I went, that's what I did. I just got like appetizers. I wasn't even that hungry because I had a big lunch before my flight. And then I went along to some of the bars and there's like one street that has a lot of bars on it. So I just walked around there, hopped into one and got a drink by myself. I didn't end up talking to anybody, but I wanted to just like keep my night going because I wasn't tired. I went to bed around like 11 p.m. and I had an early morning the next day. I went on the El Yunque rainforest tour and they picked me up at seven, seven o'clock from Old San Juan, which is really nice that they picked you up there and I didn't have to like Uber somewhere to a meetup. Um, they picked me up at seven because I was like, I'm like the furthest one away, like out of the city. So I was the first one picked up and by the time we got to the rainforest, it's probably like 9, 9.30. Um, and we were just picking people up along the way. This was literally an amazing tour. It might be like the highlight of my trip so far because of the people. The two tour guides, Enrique and Chris, were amazing. They're both Puerto Rican. And they had like a lot of knowledge just about the areas, about the rainforest specifically, and just like stories about their life, which was really cool. They were very friendly and they loved talking to all of us. I also got pretty lucky with the other people that were on the tour. There was a lot of younger people. Um, there was one other guy that was solo traveling here, staying in another hostel, so we kind of like bonded and just meshed. But even the other couples were really nice and like really wanted to talk and get to know everyone, which was nice. In the rainforest tour, you got to go down two natural water slides, which was so cool. I've never done something like that before. We went on the rope swing and did some cliff jumping 20 feet high um, in the rainforest. It was a gorgeous day. It didn't rain. Um, it was beautiful. 
would would recommend and because we were vibing with the tour guide so much we asked them if we could stop and get lunch on the way home even though it's not on the itinerary and we did we went to this place they got frozen mojitos and mofongo which is like a puerto rican dish that's plantains and i got mofongo and steak and it was delicious and it was like a family family style dinner slash lunch and it was very cute and wholesome got back to my ho hostel around like 4 p.m kind of chilled there and I've been getting pretty close with this other girl that's in my dorm room at the hostel. So we went for a walk and got some dinners together. And well, street cats are eating well today. Mm -hmm. Hi. We have a little herd over here. So cute. I know. Hi, baby. And then I ended up meeting the other solo traveler from my rainforest tour out for drinks. So he came over to Old San Juan and we got drinks again, walking around that like one main street of bars. And we stayed out probably till like 1 a.m., which was really fun. Today, my third day, I'm in Vieques. So I checked out of my hostel around 11 a.m. I woke up pretty early at like 7.30. Um, I'm realizing on this trip that I am a traveler, not a vacationer. I can't like sit still when I'm in a new place. Um, I envy the people that can sleep in on vacation and just like lay on the beach for hours. I definitely like doing that, like right now I'm doing that. Um, but I just want to see everything, I don't want to miss anything, so I just want to wake up early and like get out there. So I woke up early and I got breakfast with the same girl from my hostel, went to this cute cafe, it was delicious. I got like a bacon, egg and cheese sandwich and tater tots, it was so good, and she got french toast that looked delicious. And then at 11 a.m. I had to check out of my hostel and call an Uber to go to the ferry port. The ferry port is in like an hour and a half away from San Juan, so it's kind of far. And my Uber cost me $65, which is actually on the cheaper side of stuff that I've read. Some people were talking about they had to pay upwards of $100 for their Uber. Um, so I got pretty lucky with $65. About an hour and a half drive to the ferry port. And from there I hopped on the ferry that was scheduled at 1 p.m and it was about an hour until we got to Vieques. We, the ferry drops you off on the other side of Vieques. I'm staying in Esperanza, which is like, I would say the more like touristy-ish place. It's like, there's one main street with a lot of like bars and restaurants. So in Esperanza and on Flamboyant Street, which is like, I think the touristy area. And right now I'm at Esperanza Beach and it's literally like a two minute walk from my Airbnb. Very nice. And tonight, I'm doing a night kayak tour of the bioluminescent bay here at 8 p.m. I bought this online. Um, there's a lot of companies that do them, but I just read the reviews. This one had really positive reviews. I'll definitely um, circle back here on my take, but I'm very excited. Um, there is something crawling in the sand right here. I don't know what it is. I'm staying in the cutest locally owned sustainable beachfront Airbnb, like literally all those qualities are amazing and this is the bedroom behind there is the bathroom which is like literally huge it is just me here i feel like i'm living lavish especially um after staying in a hostel for a couple nights and there's a whole like kitchenette here and the ocean is literally right there let me show you gorgeous I got this like cover up from Depop specifically for this trip and I think it's so cute but honestly like it's so humid out I might not even like the sleeves but we're gonna try and wear it today. It's still the morning so hopefully it's not too hot. I'm just gonna go to the beach like and read, read a book before going and getting breakfast in a bit. time at the beach in Puerto Rico and it is literally gorgeous the weather is perfect it's really warm but the breeze coming off the ocean feels really nice and I'm hoping to get a little bit of a tan tomorrow my plan is to go to the black sand beach which is about a seven minute drive from my Airbnb or a 40 minute walk we'll see how much a taxi is or I might just walk it um, or I'm gonna go to Sun Bay Beach but I've never been to a black sand beach so I really want to go there
So once I get back to Old San Juan, I'm just gonna do some more exploring. I probably won't get back there till like 8 p.m. So I'll probably get dinner with that girl from my hostel and go to some bars again. Day five is my last day in Puerto Rico and I'm so sad. I definitely don't wanna leave. It's been beautiful and like a really refreshing trip for me. So I check out of my hostel again around 11. I'll probably wake up early again. And my plan is to either hit up the tour guides from the Rainforest tour because they said that they, they'd love to drink with me again um, on Saturday when they're done with their shift. So I might get drinks with them if they're free. Um, and then I'm also gonna wa walk around El Moro, which is like the old walls and like infrastructure and fortress kind of that's in Old San Juan. Prior to coming on this trip, I did like a lot of research reading blogs and reviews of places. So I have a list of like restaurants that I've been wanting to try in Old San Juan, beaches I wanted to go there, foods I wanted to try because I want to make sure like I hit most of these things on my list so that I can leave this trip like fulfilled. Like I really got like a good experience in Puerto Rico and I tried like things unique to their culture and everything. Um, so far, I think I'm doing pretty well on hitting my things. I'm in Old San Juan for one more day. My flight's not until 7 p.m. So it's basically another full day for me. But I was just at lunch and kind of like reflecting on my trip so far. I thought like I was in a little bit of a funk these past couple months because of like personal issues. And I do truly believe that space holds that energy. So like my apartment in New York just was holding that like very emotional turmoil energy and I just felt the need to get out. I obviously can't move apartments right now, so this was like the next best thing I could think of. And I'm really glad that I took the leap and like decided to come alone. I was very nervous to come alone and I hope that this trip, like I take the like refreshed and resetting feelings that I've felt while here and that carries over back into my life in New York now. I feel like I've also felt like a newfound confidence when talking to strangers. I'm not big on having a lot of small talk with people, especially people I know I'm not really going to see ever again maybe. And I let my fear of being awkward, my fear of not clicking immediately with these people, I let it hold me back from saying hello or introducing myself at all. And that's definitely something that like I push myself to work past during this trip like talk to more people like introduce yourself it's okay if there's awkward silences connections take time they take effort they take vulnerability and all those things are good and it's okay to be vulnerable with someone and it's okay to like put yourself out there and for it to not to work out i feel like where i felt the most joy and most energized was when i had these little interactions with people that being like the tour guides on my trips other people on the trip people in my hostel people at like the store the waitresses and the waiters, like all those little interactions, I definitely feel like I'm feeding off their energy. And if it's a positive interaction, like my day is made. Hopefully like I also helped make their day, but I, all these little small interactions, like give me a little bit more feel to keep going, give me a little bit more energy, teach me things. And there's a lot you can learn from people. It doesn't have to be like concrete knowledge, but just these interactions with people I think are so positive and something that I've like been lacking a little bit after moving to a new city been missing that like social interaction that you kind of get when you're at college because everybody's so close together um i don't know like obviously solo traveling takes a little bit of gut and confidence and it's a little scary 
but that same attitude can be put into so many other things in your life like talking to people at the grocery store talking to people you see on the street going to a restaurant alone and chatting with the person next to you and i'm hopeful that the attitude that i'm having on this trip the confidence that i've been feeling on this trip to talk to people carries over into my normal life and i don't know makes made things more positive.